I think we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Dr. Janet Rourke. I'm a veterinarian in Central Texas, and I am your essential oil vet. As you're hopping on here tonight, let me know where you're coming from and what essential oil you are using today. And if you have a question, post it in the comments below, and I will pick a few to answer tonight um, that pop up. But before we get started, I do have a couple of announcements that are pretty exciting. The first one is that we have a friend of mine, actually, one of my alumni students for the Animal Aromatherapy Specialist Certification is hosting a botanical backyard chicken challenge this week from Wednesday to Friday. I'm a special guest speaker on Thursday. So if you have chickens, you will want to join this. And I put the link in the description of this video. So be sure to check out the Botanical Backyard Chicken Challenge. If you have poultry, um, everything that we're going to be talking about does apply to turkeys as well. We're obviously going to be focusing on chickens since, since they're a little more common. Um, but if you have, if you are a chicken person and you have been waiting for me to do something with chickens, um, my friend Stephanie is actually putting it on and teaching um, two of the days. And then I will be teaching on Thursday. And yes, we're going to be talking a lot about essential oils for chickens. So Definitely check that out this week. The second announcement I have is that some of you may have already heard this, but starting on Tuesday, BOGOs are happening this week. BOGOs are happening this week, which means Tuesday we can get the BOGO box. The rest of the week, we're going to be have uh, the individual BOGOs available, and I will be going live every day this week, starting on Tuesday, to talk about those oils and what you can use with animals and how to use them around animals if you have pets in the home and things like that. So stay tuned. That'll be on this channel. I'll be giving some basic information about that. Just really quick little videos, not anything super long. Um, but if you're really wanting to learn, like kind of dig in a little more, uh, to those particular oils that are going to be coming out during the BOGOs. And for those of you that don't know, BOGO stands for buy one, get one free. Um, and sometimes they do buy one, get two free. And I just don't know, even know what's coming out. So <laughs> we'll have to wait and see on what those are going to be. But, um, I like to do some education around those. Uh, around the holidays, people get really nervous. That's when like, some of the viral posts go around about essential oils are going to murder your cat and things like that that, could, that happen. So that's not actually true. That's a myth in case you were wondering. But we will uh, we'll be we'll be doing some education around those this week. And if you don't have a doTERRA account, okay, I don't I don't usually talk about this, but if you don't have a doTERRA account and you want to learn more about that. Um, and these particular oils that you can get at a major, major value, um, send me a private message. Send me a private message and I have a private group that I do a little bit more education in specifically around those, those oils that are going to be coming out to see if you want to purchase them or not. Um, so send me a private message if that's what you, something you want to be a part of. You, if you already have a doTERRA account, that does not apply to you. Okay, I'm sorry, guys, but you can get your your education here. Um, or if you're in the membership group, we dig in a little more there as well. So for the animal side of things, uh, but you'll get lots of education through your normal channels for that kind of thing. So, all right, let's see. Do we have any questions today? So the first question is from Chris Zimmerer. So if you have a question, pop it in the chat. Um, so Chris says uh, they have a 16-week-old puppy with chronic loose stools. Okay, so it's not chronic if you only have a four-month-old dog. Um, so he's about six and a half pounds. The vet says he should be eight. Tried pumpkin and rice. Suggestions to firm stool. So pumpkin is a great option. Rice is also a great option. Um, the... Other oils, um, like oils that you can try um, for such a small young dog, I would probably use the kids blend, the kids digestive blend. You can also use diluted cardamom 
um, dilute to like 1% for that. You can use the diluted, um, like the, the um, digestive blend roller bottle. Uh, you can use, that's already diluted as well. Or you can do a 1% dilution of the undiluted. You can kind of dilute it yourself. So that those are some options that you can have to kind of like do that. The other thing I would do for, since it's a younger puppy, raw goat's milk actually is a really wonderful way to build up probiotics in their digestive tract. Um, and so a lot of times these young puppies, they, they get a lot kind of bombarded at them from a very, very young age. They're dewormed every two weeks. They're, um, they, uh, by four months, they've already had two or three sets of vaccinations. And so it's just a lot for their systems. And if anything has gone on, maybe they also got antibiotics or something like that. So their poor little digestive tract just hasn't established itself yet. And it needs a little bit of help reestablishing itself. So adding a little goat's milk, um, can really help with that or a little bit of plain Greek yogurt or plain kefir, no sugar added. Um, you can actually mix that in with some food as well as just kind of like a gentle probiotic. Um, puppies are pretty good at, at taking dairy still. So, um, so that is my recommendation for you, Chris. Good luck. Stephanie says, what can I put on my puppy's paws? They are rough. There is a really good paw wax recipe. And if, do I have my book right here? Maybe I can look it up and get, just give it to you guys. Would you like that if I gave that to you? Let me see if I can find it really quick. If I can't find it really quick, you're going to have to wait. Uh, there it is. Paw wax. Okay. Ready? Get ready. Or you can watch the replay. Um, it's three ounces of beeswax. Three ounces of beeswax, three tablespoons of calendula infused oil, or you can just use extra avocado oil if you don't have that. Three tablespoons avocado oil, three tablespoons coconut oil. That's the solid stuff, uh, raw or um, unrefined organic coconut oil, like the thick stuff at room temperature, um, not the liquid. And then two drops of myrrh, two drops frankincense, and two drops lavender. And if you don't like the smell of lavender, you can use cedar wood. And then you, what you'll do is you'll melt down the beeswax and the coconut oil in like a double boiler. I just use like a Pyrex container and then hook it on the side of um, some boiling water and let it melt that way. And then you add the liquid oils and the essential oils after you take it off the heat once that's already melted and you kind of let it cool. You can pour it into little tins and um, it makes a really good paw wax that you can put on their paws. As we get into winter time, that's a really good recipe for um, protecting their paws against the, the elements uh, in the winter time. And I also like it using it in the summertime here in Texas. So really, really good little recipe there. So there you go. hopefully that is helpful. Linda says, what could you use for a car sick dog? Sorry, it does not work. Neither do trazodone um, or other medications. So, all right. So, um, Linda, what I recommend is the digestive blend on topically. So for a car sick dog, use the di digestive blend topically. And then there's often a anxiety component. So there's two components to car sickness for most dogs. One, they actually get nauseous and two, they get anxiety around feeling nauseous and knowing that it's quite, you know, they might also be excited to go on a car ride or they might be really nervous about going on a car ride or they might just be nervous about getting sick and their tummy hurting. So the first thing I would do is digestive blend about 15 minutes before you leave, put it on their belly and then um, like on a blanket or it, you know, a towel or something that they're going to be laying on. Um, you can put a couple of drops of lavender or roaming chamomile, one of the calming oils. Um, you, you can use the calming blend. You can use the reassuring blend. We have a lot of really good blends that you can use as well as the single oils. Pedigree is another good one as well. The grounding blend you can put on topically as well. Um, but any of those calming oils that kind of help with the anxiety can be really helpful. And then if you have one of the little car diffusers, you can actually diffuse a little bit of ginger. Um, that can be really helpful for the nausea as well. So, um, and then start with a little, a little bit of desensitization. So maybe before you give breakfast in the morning, maybe see if they'll get in the car 
and just like drive to the end of the driveway and back, even if it's a short driveway and then get out and then that's it. No big deal. And then maybe the next day drive to the mailbox and back, you know, well, I don't know if your mailbox is at the end of your street or not, maybe that won't work, but, or, um, or maybe like around the block, you know, just short, super short drives. Um, to desensitize them to it a little bit. And then um, like I take my dogs with me to go get the mail all the time. This is about a mile away. So we have to drive um, and then get in the car and we go to the end of the <laughs> end of our little ranch road and get the mail. And they just sit in the car the whole time. And then five minutes later, they're back at the house and they're like, that was a fun adventure. Um, so that is another. So, so desensitizing it to it before you have to go on a really long trip to go visit family at Thanksgiving, you still have a, a you know, a, a good week and a half here to, to, to do that. So, um, really good question. And those are some great oils to try there. Um, oh yes. Julie says, uh, have the soul checked again and again for parasites. Yeah. Uh, that's another, th another recommendation, Chris, because sometimes some of the parasites are hard to see on, um, hard to catch sometimes. Um, Tracy has a really good question. So this is, this is a question I get a lot this time of year. Are essential oils toxic for cats? And the answer is it depends. <laughs> so the answer is, uh, it depends on the brand of oils. So high, super, super high quality oils. There's only a couple of brands that are actually okay for cats. Most of the oils out there are not pure essential oils. Even if they say pure, hundred percent organic, whatever, if you buy them from a grocery store, they are not any good. If you buy them off of Amazon, not any good. Okay. So like you have to go direct to the source, um, get it from somebody, you know, you can order it from me if you want. Um, or somebody that, you know, that has one of the good quality brands. So brand matters when it comes to cats. The other thing is that they're very sensitive and they're small in size and they're obligate carnivores. So they, they process plants a lot differently than other species. Um, so they do lack an enzyme in their liver metabolism, uh, that is, makes it hard to digest plants. And so, um, or hard to process plant materials. So it's why they're super, super, a lot of plants are really toxic to, to cats. Uh, that being said, I use cat, use essential oils for cats a lot, and I have a really great resource for you, um, for that. And that resource, let me see if I can find the link and it's free. So all of you guys can download this. It is essential oil vet.com forward slash pet safety. So essential oil vet dot com forward slash pet safety grab that link and you can download that all you have to do is you enter your email and you'll get a free um safety guide that i put together and there's like a whole there's multiple pages for cats like but there's one page in particular that talks about all the different things about cats and then also my favorite oils to use of cats so um, you do have to dilute them properly so keep that in mind as well okay very good question. Um, right. Uh, Marla has a question about goats. So any advice for mites on goats? So yeah, so there's a lot of great oils that are um, repelling in nature. And so there are the, the good oils for that are um, geranium is one of my favorites. And you can use these topically, um, topically but you also, with, with goats, you always want to address nutrition as well um, because, you know, you, you want to treat them from the inside out. So you can add some, like, repelling oils internally like oregano and thyme. And then topically, geranium is really good. Turmeric is really good. Um, we have our our repelling blend that is amazing and you could totally use it with goats and also uh, peppermint is really good um, some people like to use eucalyptus citronella lemon eucalyptus all of those are, are good uh, but those first ones are kind of the ones specifically for mites that I like all right and let's see go back to comments here um Cheerio says, are there any oils I should avoid diffusing with a cat? So grab that safety PDF. It, it gives you a list. Um, you want to be careful with hot oils 
and uh, like cassia cinnamon they're not going to hurt um if you're only using a drop at a time but there are some some diffusing guidelines there like make sure you um keep your diffuser in a place where your cat won't knock it over make sure you only use three or four drops in your diffuser at a time make sure you um, use a water-based diffuser instead of one that pulls directly from the bottle and uh, make sure that you leave the room doors open and that so that your cat can come and go and leave if it's a smell that they don't particularly like. But be careful with hot oils, so those really spicy, spicy oils, and then um, use a little bit of caution with tea tree as well. All right, but grab that free safety PDF for for additional info. And Esther says, I use oils all the time and my cat has never had a problem. That's very true. You probably because you're using really good oils. And I use cats therapeutically or I use oils therapeutically for cats. So don't be afraid of oils and cats um, unless you're just getting your oils from a grocery store, in which case you can probably just use them in your bathroom and that's fine. I wouldn't use those ones around cats at all. Oh, one more question and then we'll wrap it up today. So Taylor says, do you have any recommendations for white line um, in horses? For those of you that don't know, this is like a hoof disease. Um, and I really, really like to use rosemary and tea tree along the coronet band. So I, I will use it undiluted three or four drops of each, just rub it on the coronet band after you soak the hoof in uh, half and half like white vinegar Um uh, water and Epsom salt, uh, that, and then you can also put in some like oregano, the, you can use the protective blend. You can use tea tree in there, like in your soak. Um, uh, but that white, that white vinegar is really key for that white wine disease. Um, and then doing the rosemary and tea tree around the coronet band. So good questions tonight, you guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, and, uh, I just am here to support you guys really. And, you know, Sunday nights, <laughs> there's other things I could be doing, like watch the Cowboys lose. Um, but I decided to spend it with you instead, uh, because I love you guys so, so much. Um, if you have chickens, be sure to check out the Botanical Backyard Chicken Challenge. The link is in the description. If you want to do more of these Q&A sessions, if I, maybe I didn't get to your question um, or you're hopping on after the live, be sure to join the membership group because I answer all of the questions in there. Plus, you can actually search for your answer and probably find it because there's already almost five years worth of information in that group um, and on the website. If you're if you don't like being on Facebook, that's OK. We have a membership portal that has all the information on a website off of Facebook as well. Uh, the link to that is essentialoilvet.com forward slash members. And I will be back here next Sunday at 7 p.m. to answer more of your questions. All right. Bye, guys.